Thank you for joining with me again this day for another moment around God's Word and prayer. We are reading a chapter a day together out of 2 Corinthians right now. And uh, yesterday in chapter 8, today in chapter 9, Paul's messing with our money. And just before we dive into chapter 9, let me just say if you are still employed, if you still have an income, let me encourage you more than ever to be faithful in your tithes to whatever local church you're a part of, as well as giving to our missionaries who we want to keep on the ground, because these are incredible days of opportunity right now all over the world to share the gospel. And Paul talks about giving money. He's collecting an offering, in fact, to help uh, the church in Jerusalem that suffered persecution and famine. And so he's in Greece right now and uh, writing to the Corinthians in southern Greece saying, I know you promised to give and I, I'm just encouraging you to follow through on that promise. And in the process in chapter 9, Paul outlines what I think is one of the most potent, powerful spiritual principles in all of Scripture. It's the principle of generosity. He frames it in an agricultural term in verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows, that's to plant a seed, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously will also reap generously. It's an obvious metaphor. If you only sow five seeds, uh, you'll, you'll get five plants maybe, maximum. But if you sow 500 seeds, you, you'll get a 500 seed kind of return. He said, this is how life works. The less you give away and invest in others. And Jesus said this, this applies to attitudes. This is, applies to how you treat others. He says in the book of Luke, he said, show mercy, so it'll be show mercy back to you. Judge not, so you'll not be judged. I mean, we do get what we deserve. We reap what we sow in this kind of way. And this is a potent principle. He, he does say in the next verse, though, that that should not be used to guilt you into giving or manipulate you into giving. And here, the context is financial giving when he talks about sowing and reaping. He says in verse 7, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, because God loves a cheerful giver. So don't be guilted into this. Don't be manipulated into this. But on the other hand, don't forget that this is such a powerful principle. God wants us putting our money in directions that go away from us. And it's like seed that brings incredible harvest. Harvest for the kingdom of God. And even harvest back personally to us. In the next verse. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound to every good work. So God, God resources his back. It's not like, well, I empty my seed bag, I've got nothing left to give. God keeps resourcing you back. In fact, verse 10 says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And you'll be enriched, verse 11, in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Can you see the cycle there? Paul is saying, you know, in spite of the power of the principle of sowing and reaping, uh, you, you sow uh, a, a large no amount of seed, you'll reap a great, a great return. He's saying that's not ultimately why we give. We don't give to get. But this thing cycles. We give to give more. You give, God replenishes your seed bag with even more, and so that you can give more, and in turn, he gives even more back, and in the end, God gets even more praise by those who are blessed, by those who find Christ, by those who are helped because of the dollars you invested. This is a powerful, powerful principle. So I'd like to pray with you into this principle, over this principle, about this principle in your life uh, today. Our Father, we thank you that you're interested in us just growing in our generosity. Thank you for the way you supply abundantly back. Thank you the way you keep our seed bags from ever being empty. Thank you, Lord, that you, you supply back so that even more we can give and make a true difference in the world. We pray for churches that are struggling financially today. We pray, God, that you will help 
help the faithful members of those churches to stay generous with their tithes and offerings. We pray that you'll help us to keep missionaries on the ground all over the world to preach the gospel. We pray the principle of generosity will work powerfully in our own lives during these uncertain times financially. And we give you praise and thank you for your supply, for you are the great God. You are our provider. In Jesus' name, amen.